Offsite backups play an important role in creating a robust data storage strategy. Whether for personal use or business, having your data stored in multiple locations can be crucial in keeping your data secure. Offsite backups are important in protecting your data against natural disasters, such as fires or floods, protecting against theft, or any hardware issue that could possibly occur on your local server. When you combine your QNAP NAS with a public cloud, you get the advantages of an offsite backup while maintaining easy, fast access to your data. In this tutorial, we'll be going over how to backup your NAS to a public cloud. For this video, we will be backing up to Amazon S3. In order for my QNAP NAS to gain access to my Amazon S3 account, first, we need to acquire an Amazon S3 key file for the cloud. To do this from the AWS Management Console, go to Services and scroll down to find the IAM or Identity and Access Management link. And now on the right side of the IAM dashboard, click My Access Key. After clicking Create New Access Key, an Access Key creation window will open informing you that the key has been created. From here, you can just click the Download Key File button to download the key file. This key file can be opened as an Excel sheet, which will include the AWS access key ID and the AWS secret key, both of which you will need to set the backup job. Now that we have what we need to give our QNAP access to our Amazon AWS account to make the backups, let's get started setting up this backup job in QTS. Start by opening Hybrid Backup Sync 3. If you don't have this installed already, you can install it in the App Center. Next, select the Backup and Restore tab and select New Backup Job from the drop-down menu. This will open the Backup Job Creation Wizard. On the first page of the wizard, you will select which folder or folders you would like to backup. Make your selections and click Next. Next, you will select where these folders should be backed up to. There are a couple of NAS options to backup to either another location on your local NAS or to backup to a different NAS with the remote NAS option. But in this tutorial, we're making a cloud backup. So just scroll down and you'll be able to see the various cloud backup options that are supported, such as Alibaba Cloud, Amazon Drive, Azure Storage, Backblaze B2, Amazon S3, which we'll be using here, and many more. Make your selection. This will open up a window to create the storage space to back up to. Here, we're basically connecting our NAS to our cloud account. So this is where we're going to need that access key that we downloaded earlier. So just open the key file and copy the code after the equal sign for access key ID to input in the access key field. And then you can do the same for the secret key. Below, you may notice a few boxes that can be checked for various options. Here, you can select a specific bucket from your Amazon account. A bucket is kind of similar to a folder, but stores objects with the data and metadata that you store there. But you can also choose which bucket to back up to later as well. You also have the option to connect through a proxy server if, say, your NAS is behind a network that isn't permitted to connect outside of that network for security purposes. You can also use an SSL connection for a more secure connection to the cloud. You can also validate the SSL connection to verify that it's a valid and trusted certificate that has been correctly installed. You may also notice a note below mentioning that your system clock must be synchronized with an internet time server before connecting to the cloud service. If you haven't already done this, you can do so in the general settings section of the control panel in QTS. Make your selections and click create. Now you can see that there is a storage space created with Amazon S3. If you didn't select a specific bucket earlier, you can select one here. When selecting a bucket here, there's actually a drop down menu available which will list the various available buckets on your Amazon S3 account. Next, you can choose your multi part size. 
Multipart upload is a feature that Amazon S3 supports, which enables you to upload individual objects as a set of parts so that you can create parallel uploads or upload before knowing the total object size, among other things. Keep in mind that the larger the transfer unit, the greater the chance of a transfer failure. If you're unsure, it's advisable to select the default value of 128 megabytes. Below the multi-part section, you can choose the storage class. Amazon S3 provides various storage classes for different data access needs. Standard is recommended for general purposes. Standard IA is designed for infrequent access. One Zone IA is designed for infrequent access items that need to be accessed quickly when they are needed. Glacier is designed for secure data archiving. Intelligent tiering moves storage between different access tiers based on your access patterns. Glacier Deep Archive is Amazon S3's lowest cost storage class that is designed for long-term retention and may be accessed only once or twice a year. If you want to get more info on the various Amazon S3 storage classes, Amazon lists descriptions of them at aws.amazon.com slash s3 slash storage dash class slash. Additionally, you can opt for server-side encryption on your Amazon S3 backup. You can also enable Amazon's transfer acceleration for a more optimized network path to increase transfer speeds over long distances. Make your selections now click OK. Here you can input the job name and include a description if you like. Make your selections and click Next. Here you'll set the schedule for the backup job. At the bottom, you'll see you have the option to set no schedule at all, so in this case you would just run the backup job manually. Above that, you'll see an option to run the backup job after another job. This is to avoid running jobs at the same time so that you can better manage your bandwidth. And then at the top, you can select scheduler to create the backup schedule. There are no schedules created yet, so click the addition button to create a schedule. Here, you have the option to select a backup to occur once, occur periodically at specified intervals, occur daily, occur weekly, or occur monthly. Select the tab of your choosing and then set the time for your backup. After making your selections, click OK. Back on the schedule window from the wizard, you may notice that you can also choose to run this backup job immediately at the creation of the job by checking the Backup Now box. Make your selections and click Next. Here, you can filter your backup jobs, including symbolic links, which link to other folders, and hidden files, which are files on the NAS that you have chosen to hide so that they are not viewable. Under Advanced Filters, you'll notice that you can also filter out files by size, modification date, and file type as well. As you scroll down, you'll see there are also options for data compression and deduplication. If you are backing up a lot of files with redundant data, such as virtual machines, you may want to enable QDDupe. For more general data, you can just use compression. Keep in mind that QDDupe may be a little resource intensive, so it probably won't be necessary to run both simultaneously for most use cases. If you select compression, you will also configure compression settings. Here, you can also set your compression settings to filter by file type, file size, and compression ratio. Make your selections and click OK. Now, after you've made your selections, click Next. This will bring you to the summary page. If everything is to your liking, click Create. We have now created a backup job to the Amazon S3 cloud. QNAP's Hybrid Backup Sync 3 is a great tool for efficient automated cloud backups to help you achieve offsite backup and quick, easy restoration for your data. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos to better utilize your QNAP NAS.